John Newman entered the seminary of the Diocese of Budweiser on November 1, 1831. He completed this education and arrived in America on May 28, 1836. At the time of his arrival, he was able to speak and understand multiple languages, German, Czech, French, English, Spanish, Italian, Latin, and Greek. Immediately upon arrival, Newman was told to prepare for ordination. He had not otherwise been ordained due to the abundance of priests in his diocese in Bohemia. The bishop had refused to ordain any others. In response to his ordination, Newman had asked for time for preparation. Seventeen days after his arrival, Newman was called to St. Patrick's Cathedral to be ordained. He was ordained to the priesthood on June 25th. June 26th, Newman celebrated his first Mass at the parish of St. Nicholas. You poured out the fullness of your grace over me yesterday. You made me a priest and gave me the power to offer you up to God. I will pray to you that you may give me that you may give to me holiness and to all the living and the dead pardon that someday we may all be together with you, our dearest God. In being ordained in the Diocese of New York, the area he worked in was the whole state of New York and the upper third portion of New Jersey. At the time this diocese was home to over 200,000 Catholics, there were only 33 churches and several oratories, small chapels, designed for private worship. In arriving at the missions in Buffalo, Newman was greeted with a grateful Pax, who offered Newman the choice in his share of the work, if he would work in the city or in the country. Newman chose to station himself at Williamsville, which would give him a working area of 12 to 15 miles and 400 Catholics, three-fourths of them being German. The church at Williamsville was founded on land donated to the mission with some stipulation. It had to be 115 feet long, 30 feet high, and 20 feet wide. They had progressed to four walls constructed, but there was nothing in terms of a roof. Newman's first mass was celebrated under the open sky. Some people chose to throw rocks into the church. In the area, there was a small school in which Newman taught there until he was able to find a suitable replacement for the previous teacher. After moving around again, he created a school in North Bush and another in Lancaster by December of 1839. Soon the areas of Transit, Sheldon, Batavia, Pendleton, and Tonawanda were under his care. With this many areas to provide for, he found himself constantly traveling on foot, irregardless of the weather. Some of these posts were two hours out, others twelve. At the end of his first year in America, Newman found himself in $80 of debt which today's standards would be $2,596.44. Spiritually, Newman began to reach a low and feared his love of God was diminishing. Newman saw pride in his work, but he did not encounter the reason for this decline. In the summer of 1840, his health broke completely, which left him unable to do any pastoral work for three months. This reality check allowed Newman to make the connection that he had a fervent longing for other priests and connection. On September 4, 1840, Newman wrote to the Redemptorist Superior Prost and asked for admission to the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer. Newman had left negotiations to Pax and Prost and left the Buffalo area early October of 1840. John Newman arrived to the Redemptorist on October 18, 1840. Due to a fire, they lost the copies of their traditional ceremonies, but instead they created their own versions based on recollection, and he joined the order. Newman took his vows in Baltimore of January 1842. He then served in St. Alphonsus in Huron County, Ohio, for a few months before returning to upstate New York. He was fully naturalized as a U.S. citizen in Baltimore on February 10, 1848. He served as pastor for St. Augustine's Church in Elkridge from 1849 to 1851. On February 5th of 1852, he became the Bishop of Philadelphia. During this time as bishop, there was a new church constructed each month. In order to support these construction projects, Newman called for the creation of a mutual savings bank, the Beneficial Bank, in 1853. A mutual savings bank is designed to serve low-income individuals as it is without capital stock and is owned by its members who all provide a common fund, which could be used for loans, claims, or anything else. Under his administration, the number of parochial schools went from 1 to 200. Newman, being a polyglot, endeared him to many of the communities. 
He invited religious institutions to establish homes within the diocese to provide necessary social services. In 1855, Newman supported the foundation of the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia. Newman also brought the School Sisters of Notre Dame from Germany to assist in the instruction at Catholic schools and staffing orphanages. He saved the Oblate Sisters of Providence from dissolution. While running errands on January 5th in 1860, John Newman collapsed and died on the streets of Philadelphia. He died at 48 years old and was buried in St. Peter's Church. Bishop James Frederick Wood succeeded Newman as the Bishop of Philadelphia. Everyone who breathes, high and low, educated and ignorant, young and old, man and women, has a mission, has a work. We are not sent into this world for nothing. We are not born at random. We are not here that we may go to bed at night and get up in the morning, toil for our bread, eat and drink, laugh and joke, sin when we have a mind, and reform when we are tired of sinning, rear a family, and die. God sees every one of us. He creates every soul for a purpose. He needs, he designs to need every one of us. He has an end for each of us. We are all equal in his sight. And we are placed in our different ranks and stations, not to get what we can out of them for ourselves, but to labor in them for him. As Christ has his work, we too have ours. As he rejoiced to do his work, we must rejoice in ours also.